Friday's dismal jobs report showed not just the economy was declining in December, but that the decline was accelerating as we exited 2008, and it's likely to continue at least in the first quarter of 2009, according to my guest today, Naraman Baravesh. He is the chief economist at IHS Global Insight. He joins us now via remote from Lexington, Massachusetts. Uh, Naraman, thanks for being here. So as we were talking about these numbers on Friday, you basically say the economy is in free fall right now? It sure looks that way. It, it's almost like the economy hit a wall in September and then fell off a cliff. And the numbers are, are in fact, plummeting in terms of economic activity, in terms of jobs growth. We've lost in the last four months of uh, 2008 about 1.9 million jobs. I believe, I'm not, I'm not absolutely sure about this, I believe that's the largest four-month drop in jobs since the end of World War II. Well, I mean, all of 2008, it was the biggest job loss since 1945, so that would, uh, that would certainly fit with that. And so, so at this point, how high do you think the unemployment rate is going to go? I think our best guess is, assuming there's a fiscal package put in place early in the year, we get up to around nine and a half, let's say, by the end of this year, beginning of next year. Okay. And in terms of, we're going to talk about the package in another segment, but in terms of economic activity, how big of a drop in GDP are we looking at for the fourth quarter? Well, the fourth quarter, anywhere between 6% and 7% drop in, in real GDP. Negative 6 and then to 7%. Negative 6 to 7%, probably a very similar number in the first quarter of this year, the quarter we're in right now, and then it begins to ease a little bit. It ease a little bit, huh? So what is your outlook now in terms of when do you think we're going to see a, a bottom in this recession? And, and then obviously the next question is when do you think we'll see a recovery? Well, we think we'll hit bottom in terms of GDP growth or economic activity probably sometime over the summer. But as you know, employment typically lags the recovery because businesses are a little slow to rehire. So we won't see employment pick up probably until the beginning of next year. Until the beginning of next year, obviously. Wow, that, that's going to be painful, obviously, for a lot of Americans. And we already have consumer confidence at an all-time low. Is it going to keep going lower? And there's no question in my mind that it will because the news is going to be unrelentingly bad at least for the next four to five months. So I have to believe uh, the, the confidence numbers are going to keep going down. Well, okay. Was there anything you saw in the jobs number on Friday that, is there, are there any pockets of strength other than, pro I'm assuming, government hiring? The only areas of strength are education and health care, and they grew a little bit, a little over, uh, I think it was 30,000 jobs, but it wasn't huge. I mean, it's just, it's tiny uh, compared with the huge losses that you're seeing elsewhere. But that was about the only area that grew. Right, and we're still seeing big declines in the construction se sector. Obviously, the housing market has, has really imploded. Um, also, a big drop in the average hours worked and, and a big rise, conversely, in the amount of people working part-time jobs right now. So what does that tell you as an economist? Well, that's always a, a, an early warning that there's more bad news to come. In particular, the hours stuff, uh, the drop in hours means that uh, not only are businesses pulling back, but they're, they're usually their first line of defense is to cut hours. They cut back on overtime, they cut back on the hours, but then usually they cut jobs. They start slashing jobs. And to me, the, the reduction in hours just means that, that more job loss is coming uh, because that's usually the next step. All right. We're, we're assuming that there's going to be a big government stimulus package coming sometime relatively soon. We're going to talk about that in more detail in another segment. But what is, what is the worst case scenario here? I mean, Paul Krugman had a column last week in New York Times talking about the possibility of a Great Depression, too. I mean, how, what's, what's the worst case scenario? Because you're, you're saying, you know, unrelentingly bad and things are just getting worse. I think the risks of a Great Depression, too, are pretty low still. I mean, there's a lot of things that are very different now than they were in the 1930s. Deposit insurance, you know, social safety net, all that kind of stuff. And the that Fed wasn't there. Been very, Fed's certainly been very aggressive as well. Here. Exactly. Exactly. But I do think if, if we don't get a big bold, quick fiscal stimulus package, then you could see the unemployment rate, instead of going to 9.5%, going up to, say, 11%. I mean, that's a, that to me is sort of a worst-case scenario. All right, Nariman, thanks very much.